Hi, this is Kerry Artek with Wicked Stocks, bringing you the Daily Spy Report for Tuesday, February 15th, 2022. Before we jump into the charts, I want to encourage you, as usual, to please click like each and every time you watch the Daily Spy Report. It helps us a great deal in being found on YouTube when people search for spy analysis, S&P 500, so forth. Uh, and also subscribe to the Wicked Stocks YouTube channel. It'll provide you notification each and every time new content has been uploaded to the Wicked Stocks YouTube channel. And that's to your advantage to see it early when it's relevant for your trading and your analysis. Let's take a look at the charts. Uh, this is the big picture, kind of the daily chart. They're all daily charts. And, uh, you know, last Friday, we fell back and settled below the formation that is now at 446.65, that long-term channel bottom. It is a weekly resistance area, three stars, can contain weekly buying pressures, and below which the market remains on the defensive, as I call it, on its heels uh, into March trade. That low 400 area anticipated over the next three to five weeks or sooner. I'll get to the sooner part in just a minute. Uh, I do want to bring your attention once again to crude oil. I think it's very relevant right now in terms of its um, uh, it being an inflationary indicator. Uh, it clearly pushed uh, beyond the zone of long-term resistance that uh, is this week at 92.17 and 92.20. I'm sorry, 92.98. That is a, a long-term channel top and combination two-thirds speed line. Uh, now, so this is an intra-week violation, and I like to call them tentative buy signals. Uh, because it's a weekly chart, you really need to see how everything plays out on Friday. But as I mentioned in yesterday's SPY, uh, closing at 93.91 or higher in West Texas Intermediate Crude March contract this Friday uh, would be that 1% margin. We are clearly above it now on an intraweek basis. And oftentimes this alone will set off follow-through buying pressures, short cover trade, long entry, however you want to frame it. Uh, that's kind of what's happening now. And, uh, you know, but, you know, there we still need to see how the week settles out. You know, the weekly settlements have a sort of finality to them. Uh, and so assuming, and odds do favor that now, because there's a good chance we're in the 95 handle already, that we could be trading in the 97, 99 handle uh, by Friday's close, which is clearly above the zone. Once again, 93.91. And if so, I'm anticipating $115 a barrel crude oil, about another 20% uh, in the price of, well, gasoline at the pump, for instance, uh, and really a lot of the goods uh, that are manufactured using petroleum products. So this is an inflationary uh, indicator, and it's, uh, pro it's pointing upward. And so the fact that, uh, well... Technically, we're expecting continued weakness anyway in the SPY, but we did close a bit negative, not significantly negative on Monday. This is sort of the blown up version of that first chart, 446.65, and that 459.80 is a former channel bottom. I've been mentioning when we closed back above that 446.65 formation a couple of weeks ago after having closed below it about a week earlier, I'd mentioned not comfortable in assuming longer-term bullish continuation into March and April so forth unless we were to close above the upper 450s at 459.80 formation, which has been sort of upgraded to a four-star resistance, able to contain buying into March trade and below which this market can continue south into the low 400 area, say by the end of March, uh, and not until we close above 459.80 do I think we've placed a good Q1 low and we'll then see... Uh, you know, not only recovery back to the highs in December, but even beyond that as we continue into the second quarter. But we are far away from that right now. Let's uh, show you also that last Friday we closed below a, a shorter term horizontal uh, structure at 443.49. So this is still kind of a three cent, sorry, three point range of resistance. A little bit more than that is opening up as the week goes by. And, um, you know, I probably will more or less focus on 446.65 as sort of the aggressive uh, short sale opportunity. You know, uh, 400 puts, for instance, could be acquired now. I, I think you know that uh, following developments from last Friday, uh, which could be considered to have a target by the end of March. I think you'd want a two to three month uh, expiration on those. You'd really don't want to see a time decay. Uh, whittle away the um, 
appreciation that could occur otherwise uh, by buying uh, uh, a more expensive option that has more time left. And you'll have a decent delta on the way down, assuming that that is what we are going to do. And I think chances are good that we will continue south. Let's open the chart up a little bit more. That 446.65 channel bottom. And there's the 443.35 short-term channel bottom, our range of resistance. Anticipating now 420.76, the low from January, over the next week or two of trade. On the way down, 431.24 is the low settlement price on that move. And it is a level that can contain session weakness. Let's take a look at the support and resistance. The green horizontal line, once again, uh, represents roughly where we closed on Monday. And uh, 435.03, uh, solid intraday support level. We could get a nice bounce there. We might even place a daily low there. We came close to actually to testing it on Monday with a 435.34 low. So within about, you know, 30 cents of that or so, 30 ticks. Um it is a level that can contain intraday selling, and if violated, either breaking it or opening below 435.03, that 431.24 low settlement price, then in reach within the day where we can place a daily low. And if we settle below 431.24, in other words, uh, at a new move low, uh, then that 420.76 is likely to be tested within about two or three days where we could double bottom uh, through the balance of the week. I've been mentioning, and I haven't, I'm not showing a triple Q chart here, but I would invite you to watch Monday's Daily Spy report where I showed that uh, long-term support in the triple Q, if tested over the next week or two, and it is expected, may well line up nicely with that 420.76 low in the SPY from January. So, you know, we're now kind of flipping it a little bit watching the triple Q for its support, and then um, actually possibly, and I, you know, I would leave that up to you entirely, but, um, you know, there is a reason to believe that if the if the triple Q finds uh, a solid low in the uh, 320s, I think it's 328 and change right now is the target, um, that, you know, the SPY is going to find a similar support area, you know, uh, or it's going to be very close to placing a very similar low, wherever that may be for the SPY. So, I, I, this is a long way of me saying keep one eye on the triple Q as it approaches that long-term channel support, that targeted long-term channel support at 328 and change uh, because, um, you know, the SPY will probably find support wherever it may be at that time. Anyway, let's take a look at the upside 446.65 if we were to close above 446. 65. And by the way, once again, 443.42 to 46.65 can contain weekly buying pressures and below which the 401.47 area remains a two to three week objective. If we close above 446.65, good weekly low, we should then rally up within several days, two to three, I would guess, to the 456.83 to 59.80 area, still sort of a convergence between two channel structures. That area is widening a bit every day. Uh, but it's still there for 56.83 to 59.80 if tested over the next week of trade can contain buying into March activity. And from there, we can fall back. We do remain on the defensive uh, into March trade below this area. And inversely, if we were to close above 459.80 in the coming days, then a test of the 479.88 high from January, that may be a late December high, I always forget. Uh, would be expected within two to three weeks, and I would expect the upper 490s, low 500 area within uh, a couple of months of closing above 459.80. That 498 and change area not shown anywhere is the long-term trend line on the SPY that has performed nicely the second half of last year, September onward, and containing a series of highs uh, that played out until recently, until the uh, uh, late December high. Anyway, I'm going to leave you with the support and resistance for today. You can print it off your smartphone or your desktop. And um, please click like each and every time you watch the Daily Spy Report. And uh, subscribe to the Wicked Sox channel if you haven't already. I will be back tomorrow for Wednesday's Daily Spy Report. You have a great day.